Hey, Regina, this is Dan Kerr, and the purpose of this uh, little video is to position you for a positive experience on the makeup final exam. So there are no surprises here. You're going to have um, seven questions, and I believe they're all taken from uh, chapters uh, seven through 12, which is what we covered basically the second half of the semester. So um, I'll go through each question. I'll give you a little, um, just make sure you're clear on my expectations of each. So first one, and notice, uh, Regina, they have different point totals. So the first one is worth 20 points. Uh, the next worth is, was worth 10 points and so forth. So obviously do as uh, you want to do the best you can on each question, but please uh, especially be mindful of the ones that are worth uh, uh, 20 points. And please answer all questions. Um, you can't get partial credit on a question you don't answer. So first one. So very straightforward here. This has to do with inventory. And notice that it's the perpetual inventory method that this company employs. So it gives you the beginning inventory. It gives you the units that were purchased. It gives you the units that were sold. It gives you the date. And on the basis of that information, Regina, you have to uh, answer the following questions. First one, what is the cost of the ending inventory at the end of October? And what is the cost of goods sold for the month of October? So you need to put together uh, some type of schedule um, that shows what the ending inventory is and what the cost of goods sold is uh, if they had used the FIFO cost flow assumption. So remember, they're using perpetual inventory. So go through the perpetual inventory uh, table that you got to put together and figure out what the ending inventory is and what the cost of goods sold is under perpetual FIFO. Then take the same information above and figure out what the, and show all your calculations in the table form. <clears throat> what is the ending inventory and what is the cost of goods sold? Uh, assuming that they used um, LIFO instead of FIFO. So two different cost flow assumptions, FIFO and LIFO. And then see how much would they have saved in income taxes if they used LIFO. So uh, using LIFO uh, is going to give them a tax advantage. You know the tax rate is 40%. Do a calculation which shows how much they will actually save in income taxes if they use LIFO. And then for part D, I want you to compute the inventory on hand. And I want you to do it two ways. I want you to do it under LIFO. And then I want you to do it under FIFO. And this is inventory on hand, period. And make sure with these calculation of these uh, ratios that you use the inventory on hand ratio as was described in the, in the textbook. So I think we have a special appendix at the back of the checkbook. I forget what, uh, what table it is, but you know, at the back of the textbook, we've got all the summary of all the ratios. So use that formula at the back there for the inventory on hand. And you have to calculate what it would be under LIFO and in FIFO. And then what do those, uh, which one generates, which one shows that they're getting a better inventory on hand ratio. So if uh, do the two numbers, compare them, say which one is better and say why it looks better. Okay. So uh, for question one, you've got to answer A, you've got to answer B, you've got to answer C, you've got to answer D. Question number two, you're given some information here uh, for this country called Patrick and Sons. And there are two ratios I want you to compute. And again, use the formula for these ratios as appears in the back of your text. Uh, I forget right now what appendix it is, but it's in the back of your text where they give you all the different ratios. And you've got to calculate for two years, year one and year two, what is the fixed asset turnover ratio? And what is the accumulated depreciation divided by gross fixed asset ratio? And what do those ratios and what do the trend in those ratios tell you about Patrick and Sons? So make sure you answer both part A, where you're calculating both ratios for two years, and part B, what the ratios actually mean. Question three, you've got a company, uh, actually this has to do with some Australian companies. So you have a brewery which buys a bar and they buy a 25% interest in the bar. And here's the cost of the investment. And uh, here's the investment that they purchased. It tells you uh, how much that income that they reported. It tells you what dividend uh, was, was actually declared and paid. And on the basis of that information, you have to answer the following questions. Notice that the parent company, Kangaroo Brewing, owns 25% of the company that they purchased. They didn't purchase the whole company. They purchased 25% of it. So on the basis of that information, A, show the amount, the income statement effect on Kangaroo's books of its investment of Koala. 
for the year. So what share of the income of koala is picked up by kangaroo? B, calculate the book value of kangaroo's equity investment in koala at the end of the year. So you're gonna to have to put some type of schedule which shows what the value of their, or the book value of their investment is at the end of the year based on the facts above. And then in C, we change the facts on you. So assume that you purchase it at the same amount, assume that you're getting the, the um, everything else looks, looks the same, um, but rather than reporting a net income of 2 million, they've actually got a net loss of uh, 1.2 million instead. Um, so given this information here, <clears throat> dividend remains the same, <clears throat> what would be the book value of the investment uh, on the books of kangaroo brewing uh, uh, under scenario C? Right? So again, show separate schedules for A, for B and C. Notice that B and C, some of the information is the same. What's different in part C than part B is rather than having that income, they actually had a loss. Part four, this one has to do with a uh, issuance of a bond. And please notice Virginia that this bond is a, a three-year bond uh, and it's the face amount is 325,000. And it was issued when the market rate of interest was 10%, but the bond actually pays interest semi-annually uh, of 6%. So you've got the interest rate that the bond pays, which is 6%. You get the rate that the um, market rate of interest, uh, which is actually uh, 10%. Okay, so first question, what are the proceeds uh, from the sale of the bonds? How much proceeds will the uh, Helen Sun uh, Fine Food Company, Fine, Fine Clothes Company, how much do they receive for the issuance of the bonds? based on uh, the information above. B, prepare a um, amortization schedule for those bonds. Prepare an amortization. I need the full amortization schedule, and that would be for the full three years. And then in part C, assume that the bonds are retired at the end of year two, and they're retired at 104.5% uh, of their maturity value, and how much is gonna be the gain or loss, and show your calculation. Okay, so make sure you show calculations. You can use the tables in the back of the book, your present value tables for this. So A, what are the proceeds? B, make sure that you, um, make sure that you show a uh, amortization table for the full three years, and then calculate the gain or loss on retirement, assuming that they're retired at the end of year two at 104.5% uh, of their maturity value. Number five, this one has to do with uh, pension funds. So a whole bunch of information on the pension funds. Based on this information above, and everything you need here is above, A, what is the actual pension cost for the year? And show your calculation. B, what is the fair value of the plan assets at the end of December? And so how much, uh, what are the, what, what's the fair value of the assets still in the plan at the end of the year? Uh, show your calculations. C, what investment return expected or actual does uh, to generally accepted accounting principles allow in the calculation of the benefit cost? So which, which of the two? Do you use expected or you use uh, actual? And what is the rationale underlying the one that you use? So you got a short little essay there that answers that question. <laughs> and D, uh, and don't just give me one, there are several factors here. What factors affect the estimate of the firm's future retirement obligations. So what are the things that's gonna have an impact on the actual amount that the company is gonna to have to pay out in the future benefits to its retirees? So be sure to, uh, to summarize or list those different factors. Now in six, for this chemical company here, you've got a bunch of information about their stockholders equity. So you're looking at here, the consolidated statement of stockholders equity and comprehensive income for the year ended December 31st. So I want you to focus here on the right-hand column. So here's the beginning stockholders equity, here's the ending stockholders equity. So for each of these items that you see here listed on the right-hand side, I want you to, um, for each of these items listed here, I want you to explain to me what happened. So what is this, what happened? What is this 26? What's the explanation here? 
uh, what is the explanation of the um, all the other items that you you see listed here? Um, what actually happens? Okay. So prepare a list of key events that impacted stockholders' equity, and uh, explain why that you know what, what happened in each of those transactions. Okay. All right. And then the last one. So you're given information, you got a company that's going to go public. Um, and there are, and what you want to do here is um, calculate the value of the enterprise, Glory Enterprises stock using the price earnings multiple method um, for both a trailing multiple and a forward multiple. I actually didn't give you the information on the forward multiple. So just use the trailing multiple. So based on this information, come up that's given actually come up with the a price that this company's stock ought to, ought, to, ought to actually sell for using the uh, price earnings multiple. So you have to actually, the information that's given in there, you've got to actually come up with a calculation and you've got to come up and show a schedule that shows we estimate based on the information above using the, um, the trailing. So don't worry about forward multiple, just the trailing multiple. What would be what? What should this stock sell for in the IPO? Okay, so I hope you uh, found that little briefing useful. If you have any uh, questions or concerns, just either email me or call me, and um, I hope you do well on the exam. And I hope you found this briefing useful. Take care, and uh, good luck. <laughs>